started out at a place called Arcasa, and it was a rape crisis center. And I worked there for about six weeks before I decided it wasn't working out for me. I wasn't able to get um, enough clients to fill, fulfill my hours. So kind of my advice for you all going forward is um, a captive audience is a really great way to get your hours and internship people that are in lockdown or required. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of hard to get those people to commit to come in and see you, um, so just keep that in mind. <laughs> so from there, I also did an internship at the same time in um, the Juvenile Justice Center. Um, so I worked in detention for about six months, and I worked in two different detention sites. One was a long-term facility in which kids stayed anywhere from three weeks to a year, and eventually um, would phase out into prison or go to kids' prison, things like that. Um, all dealing with the challenges of an urban environment, um, poverty, uh, lack of education, poor family systems, and so I had the opportunity to work side by side with my supervisor in this setting. Um, the state of Virginia hires art therapists to run all of the art programs in the detention centers, um, which was a great um, thought and by them, I believe, and so kind of a rotating door in that sense of every period somebody would come in and we'd see them for an hour and we had kind of an organized art directive that we did it every day to every week um, and just did it with every kid that came in there and tried to spend as much time as possible um, in the smaller detention um, and really like getting to know them, talking to them about art, encouraging them to do art. Most of them had not really ever really had an opportunity to participate in making art. Um, and sharing their stories with people who are willing to listen as adults and not judge them, I think was really important. And um, in the other facility, the long-term facility, it was much bigger. I worked with about like 15 kids at a time with my supervisor. And um, that one was a little more challenging because there was a lot of behavioral issues um, and trying to control that kind of population. But it, overall, it was a good experience. and. Um, I learned a lot about dealing with kids. I didn't imagine myself working with youth at all. I intended to work with adults. But when I moved back to Virginia, I was not really able to find an internship site working with adults. So it's kind of what I was handed. And my supervisor there, um, since I quit my internship at the Rape Crisis Center, helped me out and found a second internship um, at a place called United Methodist Family Services. And UMFS is, and it's a residential treatment center for teens, for males and females, um, between the ages I would say of like 11 and 18. And um, the boys are mostly what are known as sexually reactive youth, so they are um, perpetrators of sexual violence and also victims. And so, a lot of the times they're working out their sexual abuse by victimizing other people. So um, that's kind of what the program specifically works with the boys on. And then the girls were more just like emotional behavioral disorders. Um, um, there's, since it was a residential center, there was a variety of different diagnoses. Um, you know, full-time staff of therapists, psychiatrists, um, and a big treatment team working together to all really try and be on the same page to help these kids as much as possible. Um, I had a caseload of about 15 individual clients that I worked with, males and females, and um, this internship was really an opportunity for me to develop my skills as a therapist, um, however I liked. Like I could, I had my own office and I could close the door and for an hour do therapy however I wanted to do therapy. And, um, and so I really had to, I learned to tailor it differently to every client that came in and sat with me for that hour and figuring out which clients responded better to which modalities. And that was a big process of trial and error for me. And, um, and it was good to have that whole treatment team on board. I sat in on like clinical meetings every week um, and heard you know what was going on with everyone. I also worked in, they're split up into cottages, so I worked predominantly with um, the sexually reactive males who are about like 13 to 17. 
So I went to their group therapy four times a week and ran group therapy with my supervisor um, and got to know them. And so that was an interesting transition from detention and you know working with kids in detention and not knowing their history. I wasn't allowed to read case files. No idea why they were there. Couldn't ask them. Um, some of them would talk about why they were in detention, and but I wasn't supposed to really ask those questions. And then ending up in UMFS, and reading their case files, and really like putting together this cycle, this process that these kids are going through, and how they end up in residential treatment centers. Um, and it was that experience was probably the most influential for me. Um, it was a real challenge also in being on the East Coast and working in like a big cognitive behavioral therapy environment and trying to figure out who I am as a Southwestern College student in this setting. And so luckily my supervisor was very open and very understanding. And like I said, I really had the ability to do whatever I wanted behind those closed doors and figure out how to be myself as a therapist. Um, so my art piece kind of started from my own personal therapy um, in which I was making you know, multiple small pieces, mostly with chalk pastels. And I started to go to my personal therapy once I started at UMFS because of reading their history and just being overwhelmed by the amount of trauma and the amount of abuse that these kids have lived with. Um, and it, it took a toll on me immediately within the first week, and that's when I like knew I had to go seek my own therapist. So my piece that I created is a response um, to that trauma, to that loss of innocence that I feel like I dealt with 30 hours a week in seeing these clients, and um, and just the things that came up for me while I was while I was with, working with them. Um, it's hard for me to talk about because a lot of it's really personal stuff. Um, but in looking at it, I think that it overall is a really great reflection of it, of this loss of innocence that I feel like I've bared witness to in these children, um, because I see it almost as like a scroll, some sort of like fairy tale script of like in our, our youth, and like this fairy tale of how things are supposed to be, and and the reality of it not being that way, um, and so just kind of working, like I said, through my own process and. Um, this mandala image is a lot about my own healing of my own childhood issues and the colors, you know, describe, I would say, like, um, my maternal attachments and things like that. And um, this wording, I kind of blocked some of it out. It was about the death of a friend that I experienced and, and like, that loss of innocence for the first time. And um, since I was in Southwestern College, I had a like, constant recurring symbol and image of this cave of me and of my inner child and of this like unconsolable crying inner child. And I didn't really understand where it came from for a very long time. And somehow relating to these children, I was able to access that, that place inside myself. And so in the end, I really think like this painting helped integrate and help is a reflection of all the healing that I was able to do myself in working with these children um, in the youth. So, um, and I don't know, I think that's about it. <laughs>